Hi, it's the mom mentor, Mona Corwin, and I am here to help you today with something that we all are trying to get a hold of, and that is getting our kids to be disciplined and have self-control, and I wanna share with you the power that you have as a mom to help your kids learn this. So the first thing I want to do is to tell you a little bit about myself if you don't know me. My name is Mona Corwin, and I am an author, a speaker, and I blog over at The Balanced Mom Life where I help you find your balance, find your callings, because you have them and you should be using them, and live your story. You have an amazing story that God's created just for you. And you and your husband, or if you're a single mom, you and your kids, you have the privilege of raising little ones. And sometimes it's hard to balance it all the marriage, the husband, the house, the laundry, the kids, your gifts and callings that you love. But there's a way to do it. And so over at The Balanced Mom Life, I help you out. And the mom, this broadcast is called Mom Life with Mona. And it's one of the things that I do to help you find your calling, find your balance, and live your story. So welcome to The Mom Mentor Show. Like I said, I'm Mona Corwin. You might wanna share this with your friends. So there's a share button down there. Um, if you know some other little mamas that are trying to get some self-control and discipline into their kids. Um, I'm excited to talk to you about this today. I was talking to some girls earlier today and we were talking about self-control for ourselves and discipline for ourselves and what a gift it is to have self-control and discipline. And um, I realized that as a parent, this is one of the things that we have the honor of instilling into our kids. So I just wanna get started right now. Um, we've all been there. <laughs> the house is a wreck, the kids are screaming, chaos is everywhere, and somebody is pushing someone or pulling someone or kicking someone, and all you wanna do as a mom is to get them to stop. And you really don't care how you get it to stop, you just want it to stop. And then you have that moment where you think there are no other mothers that are screaming as loud as I am at their kids because it's chaos and you have now joined into the chaos and you feel awful. Well, you're not the only one. <laughs> As moms, we all do it. Been there, done that. That's one of the things that makes me the mom mentor. Girlfriend, I have been there and I have done that and I'm here to come back and give you some ideas to help you in the areas of motherhood that, you know what, you just can't get a degree in this stuff. I mean, I guess I should just like have an academy or something <laughs> where we just all come in and we just all learn the things that Miss Mona got wrong and I figured out on my own or I had other mothers that helped me. There's lots of ways to get back control back of your home, but what I want to do right now before we even start is I want to encourage you. Little mama, God has given you those little babies and you're the exact one that can help them. But you can't take it personally when they get all out of whack. You can't think when your daughter looks at you and says, I hate you, you're ugly. You can't get offended and think, oh gosh, the mean girl in the back of your head starting to talk right from high school. You, you, you can't because it's really not about you. It's about them being childish and irresponsible and chaotic and impulsive. Because guess what? They're kids, they are, they just are. And as they get older and as you continue to do your great mothering, they will become more and more like the people that will sit down to you and have a conversation and they will have self-control and they will develop into the men and women that God has created them to be. But at the beginning, it's really messy. And I just want to encourage you, like, ugh, I just, I wish I could come to your house and just like hug you because it's a hard job and it's hard because it's confusing. It's not like the same every day. And so you have to be quick on your feet and you have to be creative. So what I want to do is I want to tell you some of the, um, of the things that I've done. Let's see. Oh, first I was going to tell you a quote, one of my favorite quotes. It's by Andy Stanley. He's so good. And he said, we are not raising great kids. We're not here to raise great kids. We are here to raise 
adults that will do great things for God. And that's what you're here for. Like other people, you think their kids are so great. Their kids are just kids too. And they struggle and they're developing their kids. Kids don't come out like adults. They come out like kids. But you can do it. And it might be messy and you'll probably make a whole bunch of mistakes just like I did. But it'll work out. Because even when you make mistakes but you're in a relationship that's full of love and respect for one another, kid to, kid to mom, dad to kid, mom to mom, I mean mom to dad, it works out. Things grow, even in, you know, in dirt, things will grow, even if there's a couple worms in there <laughs> or something like that. I mean, it just happens. It'll go, it'll be all right. Now, let me tell you about a test where, why discipline is so important. Discipline is important because it teaches self-control. And when kids have self-control, they grow up to have that moment where they can say, I will to the good and I won't to the bad. I will do what's right, and I won't do what's bad. It gives them the power of the pause. The power of the pause is the reason why we discipline, is the reason why we um, teach self-control. It gives them a pause so that they can make a free will choice to choose the right, or they may make a free will choice to choose the bad. But we want them to have that pause. So it's the power of the pause. And the power of the pause is the thing that I want to talk to you today. Back in the uh, 1960s, late 1960s, they did a test on kids. I think they were like four years old. And they put them in the room. You might even, even have seen this um, on YouTube. I'll post it in, my, in the bottom af uh, after I'm done um, talking. But they put these kids in one at a time into a room with a paper plate with a marshmallow on it. And they said, if you can eat that marshmallow right now if you want, no problem. But if you wait until I come back, I will give you two marshmallows and you can eat two marshmallows. And so as the video goes, it's absolutely hilarious how these kids are keeping themselves, trying to have self-control to not eat the marshmallow and the things that they do to keep themselves from eating marshmallow. You'll enjoy it. But the cool thing about this, not just that it's funny, because the kids are really, really funny, but the cool thing about it is, is that the kids, they followed up on the kids. And in the years that went, they found out that these kids had less addictions to drug and alcohol. They had um, higher SAT tests. And they did better, just not academically, but socially. And the reason was they had learned the secret of the power of the pause. Now that's what I call it, but they're saying that they had learned to wait to have gratification. So they had learned delayed self-gratification. And that's true, but the power of the pause is what made it so that they could do it. So if we want kids that are able to make really good choices, we're gonna to have to learn this power of the pause. So, um, power of the pause. Let me give you some ideas of what to do. I mean, I think you get the idea of what it is. So let's just do the stages, like from two years old to five, let's say five. Um, this is the consider the option stage. You create the pause. You create the pause for them and you um, look them directly in the eyes and you explain the consequences. You help them see what they're going to do. You say, you look them straight in the face and you say, look at me, listen to what I'm saying. And then in a calm voice, you state what they did wrong and what you want them to do instead. And then you give another pause and you say, mommy wants you to do this. You create the pause from two to five. Now about six, between five and eight, we stop to allow them to calibrate. You want them to change, let's see. Oh, you want to give them the chance to make the right choice and to have their own pause. And hopefully they'll be looking at you and you'll be able to say, 
um, let me see, like, uh, if you hit your sister again, you're not, you're not saying that because you said that last time. You're going to say when they're like from, from um, six to eight, you're going to say, what just happened? You're going to ask the questions. What just happened? Why did this happen? What are we, what's going to happen if it happens again? And you are allowing them to recalibrate the consequences in their mind. And as you're doing it, you're creating a really long pause for the, these, these little ones. And they're able to say, then you ask them a question. Which one do you want to choose? And if they choose the wrong one, they're going to get the consequence. But if they choose the right one, they're going to feel really good about what they did. So that's up to age eight. Now, after age eight, and I guess some of these, these that I'm gonna, um, saving money is another way to help them learn in a positive way. Learning self-control does not always have to be done in a negative way. Although self-control is usually practiced when people are out of control and they're being impulsive. But it can be taught in another way too, by showing them delayed gratification of, do you like that toy? Right now, um, one of my daughters wants a pair of those really high boots. They come up to your knee. And um, I could go buy her those boots. I even found some that were pre pretty good price. But I told her about the one that was a pretty good price. And my husband told, him, told her last night, if you read this book, you will get money to buy that pair of boots. So she has a choice, and we're giving her a really long one to get a long goal. So she has to practice the pause, practice the self-control of continuing to read, continuing to read, continuing to read. So that helps with that. Another way is to have them, um, oh, I did. I said save for something. Oh, help them back uh, budget something so you give them a lot of money at the beginning of the week and say okay um, you get to buy your lunch two times during the week we don't buy our lunch every single day but you can do it two times in a week and you can make lunches the other week which days are you going to buy it and help them decide which days but then you can say you know what if you decide to take your lunch every single day this week, all five days, then you can take that money and put it towards something that they've been wanting to do. So that helps them learn self-control and diligence and keeping track and delayed satisfaction even longer as the older that they get. Okay, um, one of the uh, things that I did with the youngest two because the, the, this didn't <coughs> this didn't exist when the older ones were had their phones, is that <clears throat> um, AT and T, and I think uh, I think some other one companies have it too right now. It's called Smart Limits, and I was able to put on their phone a limit to the number of text messages that they could get, that they could use. Now. They weren't being punished. They weren't being, they weren't being irresponsible with their phones at all. But it was a way for me to teach them to be diligent, to do delayed gratification, and to put a pause before they don't, they totally run out. And this is how I did it. I allowed them to have 200 text messages the very first month. And after that very first month, I said, now at the end, if you have even one text message left, even just one, I will give you another hundred. And at the end of the next month, if you have just one text message left, I will give you another hundred. And it will keep growing and keep going until you have so many text messages, it doesn't even matter. You'll have so many. And when I did that, they said, oh my gosh, how will I know when I'm running out? Well, there's a warning built into this, um, this limit, this uh, family limit thing. What they do is when you're 
um, 25 percent is left of your text messages they will send you a text message that says you only have 25 percent of your of your amount left and at that point you can call all your friends and let them know please call me don't text message me so they could still talk to their friends and I really liked it because they were getting some verbal communication instead of just always texting. And what ended up happening was Andresa didn't have any trouble getting hers. Molly had a little bit of trouble because she had to get a little bit more self-control. But now they have learned how to delegate and, and um, have delayed gratification. They learn the power of the pause with something positive. So that's one way that you can do it with older kids. Now, I do have a warning for you. Um, Self-control is, you, like I said, it's usually learned when people are out of control or they are being impulsive. So it's super, super important that you do not shame your kids, that you don't shame them and you don't guilt them. Same for yourself. When you are out of control and you've made a mistake and you for, you've gotten up late and didn't do what you needed to do and you're feeling like I am out of control with trying to be disciplined and, and you need to not shame and guilt yourself either. Shame and guilt is never a, a good ground for growing the pause. The power of the pause doesn't grow there. It just feels really yucky. So. The power of the pause grows the best when it's in loving relationship with a mom and a dad or brothers and sisters. And it is within that relationship that you are safe and you know you're loved that you're able to administer the consequences and the um, rewards of self-discipline and self-control uh, because you've taught them the power of the pause. Another thing that I'd like to remind you is that um, this isn't something that uh, this isn't something that you can you can someone else can do. I don't want you to fall for the um, okay. Well, he's just out of control, but pretty soon he's going to be in pre-K, and they're going to make him sit in that chair. Like they're going to make him. Well, that's not their job. It's your job. You're the mom. You're the dad. You're the ones that have been empowered by God and gifted by God with these amazing little kids that used to run when you say run and stop when you said stop and now they're like, I won't and I, I'm not gonna. But you're the one that's supposed to do that. Not the school, not the church, not the daycare, you. And I want you to know you can. You are super qualified. Now that you know about the power of the pause too. Okay, so that's it. And I have a scripture for you at the end here. I like the scripture. This is the scripture that we talked about with the girls that I'm doing Bible, um, doing some mentoring, online mentoring with. Uh, we will be having online mentoring again. Uh, we'll uh, open, registration will open up in January for the few spots that we have, so or I have. So um, you can uh, message me if you're interested for in January. Okay, here's the scripture that we have. A man without self-control is like a city broken, broken into and left without walls. Wow. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Proverbs 25, 28. You got to know that you don't want your kids growing up where their whole lives, everything evil and not good is coming in and out and taking the treasures of his heart and his giftings and his talent and sometimes their very life. You want to teach your child to have walls that will protect them, walls of self-discipline and self-control and the power of the pause to let people in or to tell people they have to stay out of their lives. So this is a great, a great thing that you're able to do to, for your kids. But it takes time and it takes a lot of time and it doesn't come out perfect and it won't be done tomorrow. But you just keep going, little mama. Keep going with these things that I've told you about. Alrighty, that's it. Power of the pause. I hope you liked it. I'm going to be here on Friday and we're going to be talking about a couple books that will help you get rid of the perfection in your own life so that you can enjoy and not feel the pressure and you can enjoy being the mama I know you want to be. So have a great 
Um, let's see, today's Tuesday. Have a great night. I'm going to go make some dinner for my man. Y'all have a great night. Bye.